Father Lord, as we sang, oh Lord, send you will fill our heart today to overflowing. Father Lord, I pray that everyone presented here tonight and those that are listening later, Lord, I pray that everyone's heart will be filled to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. As everyone have come with their vessel, the vessel of their soul, the vessel of their heart, and Lord, with their body and soul prepared, Lord, through the sanctification we just listen to, I pray that they will be filled to overflowing and the Spirit, oh Lord, will take over their life, oh Lord, and be moving them around. Around, oh Lord, that they will be drawn with the Spirit, they will be empowered by the Spirit, they will be strengthened by the Spirit, and the Spirit will take over and take possession of them entirely in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, come down mighty little Lord, prepare every heart to receive, prepare them to be ready to receive, and Lord, I pray that you speak mightily through me, and God the Holy Ghost, I pray as Jesus said, when he is come, and that as he is not leaving us uh, comfortless, that the Holy Ghost, he will send the, uh, the comforter, the Holy Ghost. And Lord, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you come down and fill everyone to overflowing, O oh Lord, in the mighty Lord Jesus. Amen. Fill everyone to overflowing in the mighty Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, speak to everyone in order for you to fill them. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we know you answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, praise the Lord. Amen. The message before us is the uh, Holy Ghost baptism for sanctified believer. Holy Ghost baptism for who? Sanctified believer. Let's open our Bible to the book of Joel. Let's open our Bible to the book of Joel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Let's go past Ezekiel. And then <clears throat> uh, we go past Osea. We now come to Joel. After Daniel. After Ezekiel, we go to, uh, we still go past uh, Ezekiel, we go to Daniel, go to Osea, we come to Joel, Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 12 to verse 29, Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 12 to verse 29, he said, Therefore, also now, said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and not your garment, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repented him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering, unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet, let the priest, the minister of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spear thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the eaten should, uh, should roll over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, <coughs> the Lord we answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the eaten. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his inner part towards the utmost sea, and his sting shall come up, and his heel savour shall come up, because he had done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth a fruit, and at the fig tree a divine of divine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord. Your, your, rejoice in the Lord your God. 
for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the later rain in the first month. And the flower and the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the cankan worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. Praise the Lord. You see here, the Lord told her in verse 29, he said, And also upon thy servants, and upon thy handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Praise the Lord. The Lord is talking about baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's for sanctified believers. That is why he said they should proclaim a fast. They should proclaim what? A fast. And they gather everybody. Everybody needs sanctification. Everybody needs to be prepared for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said even the babies that are still sucking, they need it. You say it's too small, it's just sucking grace. God said he needs it. He needs to program a fast. Maybe it was sucking breast every uh, two two hour. He will increase it to three hour every three hour. So it has fast for one hour. You understand? So everybody, say everybody need to fast. Proclaim a fast, and and uh, everybody praying and crying before the Lord. Even the priest have to weep, crying, weeping before the altar, not rushing to go because it needs the blessing of the Lord upon the land. Because the blessing of the Lord has gone. Now we need the blessing of God. We need the anointing. We need the Spirit to overflow everybody and be moving everybody like a drunkard. Like the beer, the beer, the alcohol, move a drunkard. The drunkard doesn't know what he's doing again, or what is moving the alcohol. And the drunkard starts telling all the truth he knows. Because what is controlling him? The beer, the alcohol. Now everybody needs to be filled with the spirit and be controlled by the spirit of God. The Lord has said through Prophet Joel to the children of Israel to sanctify a fast and cry heavily unto the Lord and that, and that the Lord will answer and restore joy in Israel by restoring all things. You can do it individually. If you see the situation of your life and what is happening in your life, you say, uh -uh -uh, what is happening? Is the Lord not alive again? Is the Lord dead? But there is a song that says, God's not dead. It's alive. God's not dead. It's alive. I can feel it in my head. I can feel it in my hand. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it all over me. It's not dead. So because it's not dead, it's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not dead. What it did in time past, he can do it today. God is the same. He still has the power. And that is why a life, the Bible says in the book of the, uh, James, chapter 5, uh, verse 17, it says, Elias was a man of like passion like you and I. And he prayed that there should not be rain within the space of uh, two and a, uh, uh, and a half years, and there was no rain. And he prayed again that rain should come, and rain came. He's a man of like passion like you and I. But what happened? He was able to set himself apart for the Lord. He was able to pray and get sanctified. He was able to pray down the power of God and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you will be filled tonight. And you will be what? Filled tonight. And the Lord wants you to be filled tonight. Afterward, He will pour out His Spirit upon the sanctified Israel. And you are part of Israel. The Israel of God today. And you will let that uh, sanctification, that a uh, blessing come upon you. I'll go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Ephesians 
chapter 2. So we see there, it, it makes us to know that now you are a child of God. Reading from verse 10, it says here, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. And because God has made you to be able to walk in this newness of life, you are now part of the commonwealth of Israel. You are now part of what? The commonwealth of Israel. And the Lord expects you to be able to enjoy the same thing because he said he will pour that spirit upon the sanctified Israel. And I believe you've been sanctified tonight. And he will pour that spirit, his spirit, his Holy Ghost upon you tonight in Jesus' name. We are going to look at it rapidly in three points. The first point we are going to see is the promise of the Holy Ghost baptism. The promise of the Holy Ghost baptism. The second point we are going to look at is the purpose of the Holy Ghost baptism. The purpose of the Holy Ghost baptism. And the last point we're going to look at is how to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. How to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, with the Holy Ghost. Let us look at the first point. The promise of the Holy Ghost baptism. We read it before in Joel chapter 2. We read from verse 12 to uh, 29. But we are going to read verse 28 and 29 now. Verse 28 and 29. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. God said his own spirit is going to pour it out. Pour it out where? On the ground? No. Pour it where? On the river? No. Pour it where? In the sea? No. Where is he going to pour it? He said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon human beings. Upon what? All flesh. And your sons and your daughters, praise the Lord. Your sons and daughters, our children. He said, every one of them is going to pour it upon them. And I believe they also have prayed to be sanctified and they are ready vessel to receive the anointing and the blessing of the Holy Ghost. And he said, I will pour it upon your daughters, your sons and daughters. And he said, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dream. Your young men shall see vision. So he said, everyone, the children, the adults, the old, the male, females. He said, everyone. And everyone will receive the anointing. We receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And everyone, we have a uh, well understanding of the things of God. You start prophesying. They start seeing vision. They start dreaming dreams. Everything according to the will of God. And he said, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Nobody will be left out. And I pray nobody will be left out here tonight in Jesus' name. And those that will listen later, none of them will be left out in Jesus' name. So the Lord said, He's going to pour it upon everyone. That is His promise. That is His promise. This promise, He gave it through prophet Joel. God promised to pour out His Spirit upon sanctified Israelite and upon anybody, any believer today is going to pour it, provided the believer has prepared himself, he has prayed for sanctification and the Lord has sanctified him by faith and he will be baptized with the Holy Ghost tonight in Jesus' name. And is, uh, we are going to see uh, some references concerning these promises. We've just read Joel. Let's look at other place. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 3. It says here, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. He said, I will pour water upon him that is what? Thirsty. And flows upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon, this, uh, upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring. What does he mean by the water? And what does he mean? The water there is talking about the uh, spirit of God. That's why he now explained it that I will pour my spirit. 
upon thy seed. It's not only to the Israelites. Let's go to John chapter 7. <clears throat> John chapter 7. So that you know believers today is for us also. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse 37. <clears throat> John chapter 7. From verse 37. He said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man do what? Taste. Let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What is that rivers of living water? Verse 39. But this spake he of the what? Of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Praise the Lord. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for you. The promise is for you and to your, for your children and to everyone at, that will actually come to the Lord. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is for everybody. All you need to do, first be saved, second be sanctified, and uh, uh, taught, be tested. Tested for the Holy Ghost. Tested for it. Because if you are not tested for it, if it's given to you, you will not drink. It's like somebody that is not tasty, he said, I want water, but it's not tasty. And you gave him the pure water. The person, because it's not tasty, will play with the water and the water will pour away. But if it's tasty, we finish it and say, give me more. Are we getting it? So that is why he said, you must taste. You have to desire it. You have to taste for it. And he will give it to you. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah towards the old, uh, end of the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah, after uh, uh, Sephaniah, you go to uh, Agai, after Agai is Zechariah. Zechariah can also say before Malachi, which is the last book of the Bible. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 12, written from verse 10 to 14. It says, And I will pour upon the house of David, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pines, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem as the morning of Adadrimon in the valley of uh, Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. He said it's so serious. This baptism of the Holy Ghost that will bring the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication upon everyone. He said it's so serious, it's so important that everyone will be crying, praying. He said the men are part, they are praying, the women are praying. Everybody are praying. And tonight everybody will pray when we say, Let us pray. You will pray. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to do what? You don't want to miss it. You will pray and pray and pray and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will be baptized with it in Jesus' name. With the evidence, initial evidence of speaking in a language you never learn. And the Lord will do it. I said the Lord will do it in your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's like atomic bomb. What made that bomb so powerful? It rebuilt itself. When it blew, it rebuilt itself and blew again. So re when you are baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will be energized inside. 
You don't need somebody to exalt you before you get uh, uh, spiritually awakened. You understand? Because you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost inside you is propelling you. And is strengthening you. And you will be strengthened in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Luke 24 49. Luke 24 49. Luke 24 49. He says here, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. The promise of my Father? The promise of the Holy Ghost. That he promised during the time of Joel. Jesus is now telling uh, those that were with him at that time, said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. You need to tarry. Tarry in prayer. You need to do what? Tarry. You wait in prayer. You pray and pray and pray. It comes when you are praying. It comes when you are doing what? Praying. Let's quickly look at Acts chapter 2 and see how they got their own. We see that they were praying. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2. Okay, I'll read from verse... Uh, one and and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto and then cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them all of them were touched all of them were baptized in the holy ghost but they were all in one place in one accord and they were praying how do we know they were praying if you look at chapter one reading from verse 24 he said and they prayed he said the what and they prayed they were there praying and if we go also to uh verse uh, chapter 1 verse 13 he said and when they were come in they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelot and Judas the, uh, the brother of James. There, uh, these all continue with one accord in what? In prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Even Mary the mother of Jesus desired baptism of the Holy Ghost. She didn't say, ah, I was the one God used to bring Jesus. So I don't need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She said I need it. She accepted Harry. She was praying. All of them were praying. She was one of those that was baptized in those days. And everybody will be baptized today in Jesus' name. Amen. So Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 38. It says here, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, You can receive it also, but you need to repent. You need to repent in the name of Jesus according to how Jesus has uh, 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 and, be and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus that according to the way Jesus has led us it starts in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse uh, uh, 12 you understand so he said you also will be able to receive this because the Holy Ghost will sanctify you and you get baptized in the Holy Ghost so he went further he said in verse 39 for the promise is unto you he said the promise is unto who? Unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The Lord has called you. So the promise is unto you. And you can receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And all those that will still listen later, and all those that will come to the Lord later, they also can receive it. 
the moment they surrender to the Lord and get sanctified, they can cry and call upon the Lord in prayer, and the Lord will do it also in Jesus' name. That leads up to the second point without any delay. The purpose of the Holy Ghost baptism. The purpose of the Holy Ghost baptism. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It said, But ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You want that power. I know you want that power. I say, I know you want that power. And he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you can get the power today as you listen attentively and as you pray. And the Holy Ghost will come upon you in Jesus' name. He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the air and you shall receive it today because that's one of the purpose for you to receive power and that power is for you to go and evangelize to go about preaching the gospel everywhere being able to preach the gospel the power to preach the power to preach the power to evangelize because when you open your mouth the Holy Ghost will fill it and it will speak through you and you speak the wisdom of God and you speak to the heart of the people and be able to bring them out of darkness into the marvelous light by the power of God. Of the word that you speak, the Holy Ghost will speak through you. So the purpose is uh, of the Holy Ghost baptism. Uh, the purpose is of the Holy Ghost baptism are one, to receive power, which we just read before. is to receive what? Power. Power to witness for Christ Jesus. Two, to bring to our remembrance all that Jesus ever taught us in John chapter 14. John chapter 14 verse 26. John 14, 26. All that you have been taught, all that you have been listening to, all the word of God, how can you remember? And how can you know this is what and to say at the right time and things like that? It is the Holy Ghost that will bring it to your remembrance. John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 26, he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you. That means, if you have never heard anything, there is nothing Holy Ghost is going to remind you of. Are we getting it? So that means, number one, you are hearing the word of God, you have surrendered your life to Christ, you are sanctified, and you are crying and asking the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. And because you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will now fulfill its purpose. It will remind you all things you have heard. And the things you are still listening to as you are hearing the word of God, when you get to the point you want to minister to souls, it will bring them to your remembrance. When they ask you a question, it brings uh, things to your remembrance. You have answer to say. You know where to go to. Because it is not you. Who is bringing it to your remembrance? The Holy Ghost. Who is bringing it to your remembrance? The Holy Ghost. So you just be remembering. You'll be opening this, opening that. You were even going to another place uh, before. You only go say, no, go to that one. Look at it. You are opening it. It will bring to your remembrance. That is why you see Peter, you see James, you see John, you see Stephen, you see Philip. All of them we are speaking by the Holy Ghost. By what? The Holy Ghost. And that's why they spoke great things. And the Lord walked mightily through them. And also, see, to guide us into all truths. To guide us into what? All truth. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, the purpose of the Holy Ghost is to guide you into all truth so that you will not go into error. How do we know those that are baptized in the Holy Ghost? They don't go into error. No matter who try to deceive them. Popular preacher or this is trying to bring error. No. Because they are baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost guide them into all truth. Immediately they know this one, what he's saying is wrong. Are we getting it? Because it's baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's, the Holy Ghost is guiding him into all truth. It's guiding her into all truth. Uh, John chapter 16 verse 13. John 16 13. He said, How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost is called what? The spirit of truth, not the spirit of error. The spirit of truth is come. 
He will guide you into all truth. He will not guide you into error. He will guide you into all truth. So he can't tell you to be using things that are not uh, uh, according to the will of God. For example, telling somebody to be using comb and say, I'll comb your hair, uh, bring comb and comb your hair to the back and uh, be praying uh, 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 that all the bad things will go as you are combing your hair now to the back and then comb your hair to the front and uh, or say all the blessing you want to come to the front and go and keep the comb, the comb because if you miss the comb, uh, you have missed your blessing. No, the Holy Ghost will not lead you to do that because that is not part of the word of God. The word of God says, pray in the name of who? Jesus. Not comb. Are we getting it? So you know immediately whether the person is popular or not popular that he, what he's saying is error. The Holy Ghost will not lead you into error. It will guide you into all truth. Are we getting it? It will guide you into what? All truth. Uh, D, to glorify Jesus in us. The Holy Ghost will glorify Jesus in us. John chapter 16 verse 14. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He shall glorify Jesus in us. And uh, he, to comfort us. To comfort us. is our comforter. He will comfort you in all situations. No matter the situation. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. But in prison, we are there crying. They prayed, they sang. And what came down? The Holy Ghost came down. And they were comforted. And even all their shame and everything uh, fall off. And the prison door opened. And did they run away? No, they were comforted. Is the jailer that nearly killed himself? They say, ah, mister, don't kill yourself now. We are all here. You need to surrender your life to Christ. And they preached to the jailer, and the jailer surrendered his life to Christ. And the jailer was not afraid that they would run away. He took them to his house, and he made them to shower, and they uh, preached again to him and his family, and they took them to the riverside and baptized them in water. And later he took them back to the prison. Praise the Lord. Because the Holy Ghost comforted them. The Holy Ghost did what? Comforted them. And the purpose is to teach us all things. Is to teach us what? All things. Uh, uh, John chapter 16 verse 26. At that day ye shall ask in my name. <clears throat> Uh, I mean chapter 14 not 16 chapter 14 of uh, John verse 26 it says but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things he shall teach you all things if you can pray listen to the Holy Ghost he will teach you all things all things, all things, praise the Lord, Amen. and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you, the Lord will teach you all things. Jesus was baptized with the Holy Ghost and power in Acts chapter 10 verse 12, 38, Acts 10, 38, Acts 10, 38, Acts chapter 10 verse 38. He says here, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing them, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was baptized with the Holy Ghost and with power, every one of us need to be what? Baptized with the Holy Ghost and with power. You need it to the Holy Ghost baptism. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6 said, He that seeth that he abided in him, ought so, so to walk, even as Christ walked. If you say you abide in him, do what Christ did. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost and in power. Pray. Pray so that you'll be baptized tonight. That takes us to the last point. How to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. How to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The step to, uh, to get baptized in the Holy Ghost 
is first you must be born again. You must be what? Born again. When you were born, at first, you were born by your mother. You were born by who? Your mother. That's born of the flesh. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. <clears throat> I'll read verse 6. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's born by the mother. Are we getting it? But he now went for that. He said, and that which is born of the spirit is what? His spirit. That is why he said, ye must be born again. To make heaven, you have to be born twice. Those that are born once are going to hellfire. But those that are born twice are going to heaven. Are you getting it? If you are just born only by your mother, you will end up in hell. It means there is no salvation yet. You understand? You, <coughs> you have to be born again. The second bed. Born of the Spirit. And how do you get born of the Spirit? Verse 5. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You must be born again of water. What is that water? The word of God. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Or rather, let's just go to Ephesians. That would be easier. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 25. <clears throat> he said, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by what? The word. What's the water there? The word of God. So he said, to be born again, you must be born of water and of the Spirit. Born by the Word of God. You hear the Word of God. The Word of God drives you to Christ. Your need of salvation. And you pray and confess your sin to God. And forsake them and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are born of the Spirit. Are we getting it? Salvation. So the first step is salvation. In other words, you must be you must be saved by grace. Because God says, don't give our holy things to the doors or to swine. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. So he cannot give the Holy Ghost to somebody that is not yet born again. Why did God call and say that those that are not born again are dogs? Why did they say so? How do dogs behave? Boyfriend, girlfriend. Is it not? What do the dogs do? Boyfriend, girlfriend, you see uh, about four or five uh, dog male fighting over one what? Female. This, that's what unbelievers do. You understand? That's why God, spiritually, they are what? Dogs. Are we getting it? So God will not give uh, holy things to the dogs, spiritual dogs. You understand? So first thing, the spiritual dog has to be born again and become what? Sheep. Then, he move further. He will now move forward for another thing. He needs to be sanctified. He needs to be what? Sanctified. He desires to be holy as God is holy. And God has said it. That he shall be holy unto me. For I, the Lord thy God, am what? Holy. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter, chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 15 and 16. He said, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy. For I am holy. 
So there is need for sanctification. Just like a, 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 a just like a monkey, uh, I mean a sheep cannot give birth to a monkey. Is it not? A sheep will give birth to its like. So God said to be my children, you need to be what? Holy. You are born again, but you need to be holy and live like a child of God. You see the cubs of lioness? That is the children of a lioness. Even though it's small, it's also roaring like the daddy. Are we getting it? Even though the voice is small, it's a, a not that loud. It still do the same sound. And you see animal that is bigger than it and he's also acting as if I can take down this animal. He's behaving like his daddy. Is he not? So God said you have to be holy for I, the Lord thy God, am what? Holy. So you press for sanctification and as you get sanctified, then you taste to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and you pray for it. So let me just lay it out in a simple way. A. Test and hunger for the Holy Ghost baptism. For those that are already born again, we read it before in the book of John chapter 7, verse 37. B, come unto Jesus in prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 to 11. You come unto Jesus in what? In prayer. Because Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. When you want to baptize in water, the pastor or somebody God pastor delegate will baptize you in water. But when it comes to baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is Jesus that baptizes in the Holy Ghost. It is who? Jesus. Jesus. So you come to him in prayer. D, as you have prayed, you drink. Because he will now give you the Holy Ghost. You have to now drink the Holy Ghost. How do you drink it? It's by faith. Let's look at it in Mark chapter 11. Anything you ask God, the way to receive, the way to drink it, the way to receive it, is faith. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Mark 11 24. That's why after you all have prayed for the sanctification, I said you have been sanctified because I believe you have believed. Are we getting it? Mark chapter 11 verse 24. He said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, what do you do? Doubt? No. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Are we getting it? After you've prayed, you believe that you have received already, and ye shall have them. But if you don't believe, you won't have them. That is why when I say round up prayer or something like that, we have all prayed, we now say round it up. You will say, God, we know you will, you are going to answer us. We say, thank God, because we know you have answered us. You believe. We know you have done what? Answered us. We have received it. That's faith. That's what? Faith. So, that is what, how to receive it. You now believe. And finally, speak as the Spirit gives you utterance. As from that moment, that you've thanked God that you believe. Speak as the Spirit give you entrance. Speak as the Spirit move you. You understand? Because that's what they did in Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And that's what God wants us to do in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21. 2 Peter, before we stand up to pray, because we are going to pray now. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 24. 2 Peter chapter 1 Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake as they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. You'll be moved by the Holy Ghost. Stand upon your feet now. Put your Bible aside now. Put everything aside. Forget about everybody beside you. Forget about everybody before you. Forget about everybody behind you. And now talk to the Lord. And are you are you born again? If you are not yet born again, you can surrender your life to Christ now. Confess your sin to God. Forsake them and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you have done that, pray that God should sanctify you and believe that God has sanctified you as you ask Him. And if you have done that, now call taste for 
baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I need the anointing of the Spirit. I need the anointing of the Spirit. Then you desire it and you ask God, Lord, baptize me. You promise in your word that you baptize all thy children with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost and power. And my Lord Jesus was baptized with the Holy Ghost and power. I want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and power because I want to follow the footsteps of my Lord. I want to follow the footsteps of my Savior. Oh Lord, baptize me. Oh Lord, baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and power. Open your mouth, close your eyes and talk to the Lord. You need it. Talk to the Lord. Baptize me. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with power. And with power. And with power. Lord, I don't want to be left behind in this power. I don't want to be left behind in the spirit. Lord, you said that that day is coming that you pour your spirit upon all flesh. Lord, I'm part of the all flesh. Pour your spirit upon me. Pour your spirit upon me. Talk to the Lord. Pour your spirit upon me. Talk to the Lord. Don't look at anybody now. You are looking at the Lord by closing your eyes and tell the Lord, pour thy spirit upon me. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, anoint me. Lord, anoint me. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord to baptize you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Tell the Lord to pour it upon you. Tell him to pour it upon you. Tell him to pour it upon you. Tell him to pour it upon you. Because the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off and as many as the Lord our God we call. You must be baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight. You must be baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, baptize me, baptize me. Oh Lord Jesus, the baptizer with the Holy Ghost, baptize me. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, don't disturb anybody. You pray, talk to the Lord and let others pray. Everybody need it. Everybody needs it. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. To baptize you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus was baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with power. Paul the Apostle, Peter, James, John, even Mary the mother of Jesus. She also prayed and she was baptized. She was one of those that were baptized in the upper room. Pray, pray, pray. You need it. You need it. Philip was baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with power. Stephen was baptized and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost started moving them. They were moved by the Spirit and they speak, they speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Talk to the Lord. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord to baptize you. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Talk to him. Open your mouth and talk to him. Talk to him. Baptize me, O oh Lord. Baptize me, O oh Lord, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with power. Baptize me, O oh Father. Lord, I need it. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. And you'll be energized. You'll be a super Christian. You become a super Christian with the power of the Holy Ghost. Like Paul, the Apostle, like Peter, like John, like James, like all the other Apostles, like Stephen, like Philip. You become more intimate with the Lord. The Spirit will be leading you to all into all truths. You will not be led into error. Tell the Lord I need it. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Baptize me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And with power. He will lead you into all truths and teach you all things. Baptize me. And the power will be walking through you, walking within you. 
Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Fill me, O oh Lord, with the Holy Ghost and power. Baptize me. Soak me in thy spirit. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. The Lord is filling you, is filling you, is filling you, is filling you. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you. Pray, 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 and believe. 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 That's how you drink it. That's how you drink it. That's how you receive it. That's how you receive it. Believe. Believe. Believe that you have received and you shall have it. Believe that you have received and you shall have it. Believe that you are baptized already and you shall have it. And the evidence is the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank and worship you and praise you, Lord God, for a time like this. Lord, because you said that you will pour thy spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And the sons shall uh, 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 see vision. And you said the young men shall see vision. And the old men shall dream, dream. Father, your people have presented their, themselves unto you, born again, sanctified, and they have tasted and cried unto you. And according to thy word, you have answered. And you have poured your spirit upon them. Lord, I pray that the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, let it start manifesting in the life of everyone that have prayed to you genuinely, that have called upon you, and that have believed in Jesus' name. Amen. And the one that do not believe well, Lord, help their own belief in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the evidence be manifested in them. As from this moment onward, we thank you, Father, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's clap for Jesus.